Okay, you're asked to create a rational function with these characteristics where the numerator is a polynomial, quadratic, and so is the denominator. Okay, now let's add the whole at the end, and you'll see why in a second. So if there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, that means there's a factor in the denominator of x minus 3. Because at this point, whoop, if we put 3 in for x, we'll be dividing by 0. So x cannot be in the domain of the function. That will create a horizontal asymptote, a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Uh, if we want a horizontal, uh, an x-intercept of negative 5, that means that x plus 5 is a factor of the numerator. Because when x is negative 5, we'll have a 0 in the numerator, and 0 divided by any number is 0, so the x-intercept will be at negative 5, 0. So there is what the function looks like before we add the whole. So at this point, we should say, what's the y value going to be when x is negative 2 at this point? So what's right now, what's f of negative 2? Well, let's see. We'll have 3 in the numerator, negative 2 plus 5, and we'll have negative 5 in the denominator. So that means the whole is going to occur at the point negative 2, negative 3 fifths. And now we will add the whole. And that just means we have this factor in the numerator and in the denominator. So. If we were trying to figure out where the hole was before we created the function, we might have started with this expression, x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x squared minus x minus 6. So if we were given this function to start with, we'd go in this direction. We'd factor and then say, oh, there's got to be a hole at negative 2 because these factors cancel out. So there's your answer right there with the understanding that if you wanted to, you could put other numbers in front of this trinomial, like 3 and 3. And if you distributed that 3, you'd get something like, 3x squared plus 21x plus 30 over 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. So as long as the coefficients of the highest degree term are equal to each other, you will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. That's what you focus on when you're determining the horizontal asymptote. Okay, here is what the graph actually looks like. There's that f of x with the hole. There's the hole at negative 2, negative 3 fifths. There's the function with the, the uh, binomials multiplied together. Here's the function before we added the whole. And if I add a column to this table, you see that uh, g of negative 2 gives us an answer of negative 0 0.6, but of f of x of 1 is undefined. That's why we have a hole there. And there's the root. 
There's the horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. Notice that in here, as we get really big values, 50,000 for x, the y value gets closer and closer to 1. That's what we mean by a horizontal asymptote. Or negative 50,000, 0.999. We added another 0, we need even closer to 1. Okay, and as we approach the vertical asymptote of 3, to the right of 3, the y values get really big. We'll never cross the vertical asymptote. We'll never touch it. So we'll be either approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. And as we get close to 3 from the left of 3, 2.999, we are approaching negative infinity. The closer we get. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here. No. That's it. Oh, uh, other than it, like I say, if I put a number in front here, like uh, let's put a 2 and a 2, the roots still stay the same. The horizontal asymptotes, asymptote still stays the same. Uh, but some of the values on the function change. If I put a negative here, Same difference. Okay, there you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment.